I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we uncover the mysterious world of the Amazons. It's a terrific book written by a wonderful author by the name of Peter Gunn. Join us right now as we dive into this thrilling tale of an elderly explorer's last wish and his son's dangerous journey to a hidden society of giant women in the Amazon jungle. We will discover the secrets, civil unrest, and impending war that could change the fate of both the Amazons and the human race. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Books to Life Marketing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Peter, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. I'm happy to be here. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write about a hidden society of giant women in the Amazon. I have a daughter, and I want a heroine for her to look up to when she gets older. And then you start looking at possible options and can't help but, you know, you come up a little bit short. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, give the folks at home a brief overview of what your book is about. Well, an early explorer uh, on his deathbed tells his son um, about a fantastic story of when he was younger and he went to the Amazon and he fell in love with one of the Amazon women. And he asks him to bring a letter to her as his last dying wish. Mm -hmm. So he goes back, you know, and uh, he is thrown into civil unrest uh, and a long epic story pursues. Yeah, it's a great story. It feels very, very real. Um, tell the folks at home, are these women giant because of their size, because of their abilities? Is it figurative? Is it literal? Well, if you go in the ancient uh, history, okay, they were technically demigods, okay, and which means they're, they're not human. They are gods, and they were bigger and more capable than humans, okay? So I interpreted that to the nth degree when I decided to write it and say they were about 10 feet, 14 feet large, and go from there. Yeah. Did you have to do any research on the uh, ancient Greek mythology upon oh, which yes. the Amazon? Oh, yes, a lot. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of extra reading. Any writer can say they could easily spend hours, you know, just going into and delving into it. Um, I like to do what I call a Dan Brown, and that is bringing in actual real history and then intermingling it with, you know, that, you know, fantasy and then it leaves the 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 person that's that's reading it questioning wait a minute is this real or is this fake yeah amazing did your background as a 21 year u.s air force veteran influence your writing at all um i think i've i've based some of my characters on people i've worked around with i mean because you know you 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 serve for that long and you you uh grow fond of the people you're you're around, you know? So yes, yeah, some of my characters were based on actual people I worked with in the Air Force, yes. Very, very cool. Tell us a little bit more about the civil unrest and the potential war between the Amazons and the human race in your book. Well, this is in the late 1890s. And if you look up your history, um, America wasn't the first one in there looking to build the Panama Canal in, in the, the northern part of South America. It was actually the French. OK, and they were putting in survey markers and everything like that. And in the book, um, you know, the Amazons know their territory and they know what's happening. And they, they hear through the rumor mill that what's going on. So they're upset about it. Hmm. And they're considering going to war with the humans over this infraction into their territory. Very cool. Now, obviously, in popular culture, stories of women from the Amazon have been extremely popular, such as Wonder Woman. Have you yeah. envisioned this perhaps as a movie or a series or something? Well, you know, I took offense to the, uh, what was it, 2017, when the first movie came out for Wonder Woman. I took offense to it because while they depicted the main heroine, you know, Wonder Woman, decent, the rest of the Amazons were, were left, you know, to, they didn't depict them that well. Right. You know, a single bullet took one down. Yeah, so I wasn't too happy with that. 
Yeah, so, so you I don't like their version of it. Your and, version and, might be uh, do more justice on the big screen or yes. the small screen yes. than that story because it wasn't just one yeah. woman who was extraordinary. You've got a whole society of women it who are extraordinary. Yes, yes. Big dog, Spartans, but female. Yeah, very, very cool. Have you um, read this book to your daughter or how old is your daughter? Uh, maybe she read it herself. I don't know. Uh, I'm redoing a rewrite now for a publisher. Um, right now it's written in, you know, in poetic, uh, uh, type, but I'm going to be writing, rewriting it in LLC linked to lyrical poetry. I'm going to wait till I finish that. Then I'm going to read it to my daughter. Wonderful. Wonderful. Is this the first time you have, uh, written a book? This, the Amazon would be my first book. Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the writing process. Well, um, I think meditation is a big a portion of it. You know, uh, you have to relax and, and, and calm your mind. And then you look for um, things to to inspire you. You know, um, I know when I walked into the bookstore, I saw you know, your, your basics. You have Beowulf in the poetry section. You have the Iliad, the Odyssey in the poetry section. You have Dante's Inferno in the poetry section. You have... And they're always there. When as soon as the, as soon as they run out, they're going to order more. Where's the feminine, you know, in there? Where where is our females being represented in that? Yeah. Okay. And that's what I want to do. I wanted to bring females into that, and also show that if the men and female can get along, there's a synergy between the two of them, and they can become much more powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you working on a new book or a sequel, perhaps? Tell us a little bit about you, how your writing well, career is going. Right now, I'm working on the Amazons, too. OK, mm -hmm. it's about halfway finished. And uh, I'm when all is said and done, I'm going to make it into a trilogy. So it's going to be three books in the series. Wonderful. So what do you envision happening in the second book? Well, I don't want to give away too much, right. but there's going to be new enemies, new characters, and it's going to go into a, a, a different realm involving both of them, the heroine and the hero traveling the world. Very cool. And book three, again, will introduce more heroes, more villains and pick up on the yeah, story. More heroes, more mythology comes into it. And there's, trust me, there's a few uh, things there you won't see coming. Very cool. Very cool. Tell us a little bit about your life outside of reading. I understand uh, writing rather. I understand you're a bodybuilder and you're into public speaking. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Well, I like to speak to to people that uh, have creative minds, okay, and go inspire them. Uh, I do talk a lot about uh, uh, linked lyrical po poetry LLP. Um, basically, you take the last word of each sentence, and then you try to link it to the first word of the next sentence, and then a poem or whatever you're writing will start to sound like a song. It will flow and it will, it will it brings a beauty to writing. Okay. Although if you do it that way, you could easily spend an hour or more on just one paragraph. Yeah. Trying to find the right word. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I guess you like to work out uh, in between. Too. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a big part of your yes. life. That's I mean, awesome. I've been walking into, into the weight room since I was 16. So it's it's a part of my life. Uh, it's good, particularly if you're in the military, to stay in shape. Yes. Are you still in the Air Force? Yes. Uh, no, I'm retired right now. Yes, I'm retired. Okay. Tell us what your uh, two decades plus of service was like. Where were you stationed? That kind of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Um, I started out in Arizona, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Then I uh, was stationed with the Thunderbirds in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, then I went to, uh, uh, well, I was stationed in Korea for a little while, mm -hmm. uh, Japan, and then I went to Italy and, oh, that, that's a lot of fun there. And yeah. then uh, I came back to the United States and then I retired. Very cool. Well, it sounds like you had a great tenure in the air force. We're glad you came home safely. Uh, I imagine your experiences are, uh, um, ingredients for future books, no yes. doubt, because you've seen Definitely. a lot of places, you've done a lot of things, you've gone where a lot of people have not gone, which is amazing. This is an amazing story it's called The Amazons. It is written by Peter Gunn, and it is a tale of an elderly explorer's last wish and his son's dangerous journey to a hidden society 
of giant women in the Amazonian jungle. And it's not just that the women are stronger than um, average, but they're extraordinary in many, many different ways. It's a wonderful book. It's inspiring to women. It's inspiring to all people, no doubt. Peter, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. It was a pleasure to be here. Pleasure having you on the show and to the folks at home. I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.